expository preaching, and uh, which means I don't have a particular outline to follow. We just read and preach as the Lord has laid it upon our heart. And this scripture is so full of, of everyday uh, helps that if we'll just pay attention just, that, just for, uh, of the scripture, it will greatly help us in our daily walk with the Lord. If you're here visiting with us this morning, make yourself home at the house of the Lord. Good to have you. Appreciate you being here. 1 Samuel chapter number 17, and I'm going to read several verses here, but you stand with us, if you will, while we read. 1 Samuel chapter number 17. First chapter number 17. This is a, a story, a historical event that happened that, that it concerns David and the battle with Goliath. And this is full. It's not just an entertaining story. It is a very true story and a lot of great lessons to be learned uh, from this story of David and his battle with Goliath. And so 1 Samuel chapter number 17, I'm going to read a few verses here beginning with verse number 1. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shachah, uh, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Shachah and Azekah in Ephes Damon. And Saul and the men of Israel gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah, and sat the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulder. And the staff of his spear was like a, beaver's, a weaver's beam. And his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. And one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am, I, am not I a Philistine and you servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. I pray, God, that you'd help us as we rightly divide the word of truth, God, by your help. I pray, Father, that you bless us through the word of God. Lord, give us those words of wisdom and encouragement, God, that will help us as we leave here today, Lord, to be fed from the bread of heaven, Father, give us strength as we go this coming week that we'd stand against the giants that we face with courage of God. Bless us now together in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I only read part of the story of, of uh, what we call the David and Goliath story. We find here that David had been anointed to be king of Israel. Remember, they called all the brothers of Jesse and they came to him and, and they said, is there not someone else? And uh, they said, well, we've got one out tending the sheep. He's just a little teenage boy and uh, we didn't think you'd be interested in him. Now I'm reading between the lines. And uh, Samuel said, go get him. And so when David, the little, uh, the little strapling of a young man, uh, the little red-headed boy, you know, that's, that was, would have been his appearance, and he come before them, and Samuel said, God said to Samuel, that's the one, anoint him to be king. So a lot wasn't known at that time about what was happening, but I'm sure David knew what was going on. And so he was anointed by Samuel to be king while Saul was yet king. And so he would not take over the kingship until Saul had, had died. Now Saul was rejected as being king by the Lord because of his disobedience and uh, because that, you know, he didn't show himself fit to be the king. But God appointed David to be the king, and he was certainly going to be that. And we, as we study on in these, these chapters, we'll see how David will continue to be king. So while all of this was going on, David was anointed to be king, yet he continued 
about his daily business of doing whatever uh, he was supposed to do. He went back to tending the sheep and uh, went back to learning of the Lord there in that, in that uh, educational time, we'll call it, and we'll show you why we call it an educational period. But he was being educated of the Lord to be the king of Israel while tending those sheep. And uh, he would be called upon on occasion to go before Saul and play the harp because of a evil spirit of the Lord had come upon Saul or from the Lord had come upon Saul and he would have fits of depression, uh, you know, fits of, of uh, terror and all these things. And the only thing that would, would calm him down was David playing his harp before uh, King Saul. So he would go play his harp and then go back to the, you know, go back to doing his daily business. Now, we come here to this chapter when David appears on the scene once again. And so we see here how the Goliath is standing over here. The armies of, <clears throat> of the Philistines on one side of the Valley of Elah. I've, I've been there and looked at that. And uh, here is uh, the children of Israel standing on the other side. And the, and the Israelites come to set a ray in the battle. In other words, they come to get ready to battle. The Philistines were ready to battle. But because of the lay of the land, no one would move first because the one that moved first was, was uh, destined to be defeated. Uh, trusting in their own instincts and their own, uh, you know, uh, way they looked at all those things. But God had a plan to defeat the Philistines and use one man to do it. Now, eventually the whole army got involved. But here comes little David again. Now, this man Goliath was a big old boy. Now, you read and, and you go back and and look at all the estimates of how tall he was, you'll get anywhere from 9 to 12 feet. And uh, that's a big old boy. I mean, nine, 9 foot tall, if that was his true height, or if he's 12 foot tall, somewhere in between there, he was, he was uh, a big old boy. Now, he, he challenged the children of Israel, the nation of Israel, he challenged them for the whole army of the Philistines. Now, he was standing there with a the helm of the brass that covered everything except right here, right there. And he had on a coat of mail, which, which if any of you have ever seen scales on a fish, uh, that was what that was. It was, it was brass woven like, a, you know, like a, a big old heavy armor that, that uh, protected him. And then he had, don't sound like he was too brave, does he? Sound like he had a lot of mouth about him because he... He was, you know, he, his legs were, had uh, shackles. I mean, he, he, he had everything on to protect him from any one human being. Now, there's a good story in that, but I'll try not to get into all of that because chasing rabbits, I'll never get anywhere this morning. So picture Goliath in your mind. Just picture this big old bully. Plus all of that, he had an armor bear, or a... a, a um, a uh, shield bearer before him that carried a shield in front of him. Now, you would look at this man and say, he's indefeatable. There's no way that anyone can win against this man. We can't penetrate all the armor that he's got. Him. Anyone, anyone want to guesstimate how much all that armor that he carried weighed? Over 250 pounds. Happy to say that's more than I weigh. <laughs> But he carried all of that on him, plus that, that uh, spear that he had that had a, a, a head on it at, that weighed 25 pounds. 25 pounds of a spearhead. So everybody's looking and saying, you know, who can do anything with this man? Now, would it not have been wise, as we look at this story, to thank the one in Israel that should be able to, to go and fight with Goliath would have been Saul. Because Saul was head and shoulders above everybody else. He was the king. He was the mighty one. But no one would go down and fight this giant. No one had the faith to believe that no matter how big the giant was, that God could, could deliver them from that. 
So they're all sitting there yelling back and forth to one another. Nothing is getting accomplished. So here comes David. Verse number 8. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine? And ye servants of Saul, choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will be then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. So there's his ultimatum. You come on down here. I'm the big guy here, and I've got all this armor on me. He knew nobody was going to come down to fight him. So he just kept uh, yelling his uh, propaganda back at them. He said, but if you can come down here and beat me, He said, we'll be your servants. If you can kill me, we'll be your servants. So no one was going to come and beat him. And so there he stood just taunting the nation of Israel. God's chosen people had, was being taunted by a Philistine, uh, you know, uh, that, uh, that had, you know, could not rule over them unless they let them. So we read the story on. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel. This day give me a man that we might fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. The big boy down there on the other side, with all the 250 pound plus armor on him, that stood almost 12, 9 to 12 feet tall, was defying the whole nation of Israel. One man, it's kind of like our world today, ain't it? There'll be one jerk standing up somewhere in the world and cause everybody trouble. But here we are, and here's David doing the same thing to the nation of Israel. Send somebody down here, but they were Saul was afraid. Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons, and the man... Uh, went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle, and the names of these three sons that were, went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and next unto him Abinadab, and the third Shammah. And David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. So he enters David, the man after God's own heart. Remember, Every message we preach to you is about David, the man after God's own heart. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem, and the Philistines drew near morning and evening and presented himself forty days. And Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephah of, of, of this parched corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp of the brethren. And carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare and take their pledge. Go see how your brothers are doing, is what Jesse's telling David. That's all he's telling him. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper. Now you notice that verse right there, we'll read over that and never catch the meaning of that significant verse of Scripture. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper. David did not leave those sheep alone while he was gone. David made sure that there was someone to do his job because that was his responsibility and he left those sheep with, sheep with a keeper that they might be protected. God's people are never forsaken of the chief shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. Never. Never. He will be with us till the very end. He doesn't leave us nor forsake us. He doesn't leave us with a keeper, but yet he did leave us with a keeper. You know who the keeper is when he went away? The Holy Ghost of God. He said, I send you another comfort. So here we see that illustration in this verse uh, that, that when David went away, he left those sheep 
with someone to take care of them until he got back to do the job. Boy, there's a message there. I got to go. Amen. I get to preaching on that and Jesus coming back. But, but uh, <clears throat> he left him with a keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistine had put the battle in array army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of, of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them forty days. He'd been coming out and saying the same thing. Nobody's going to go fight him. But wait a minute. Today, somebody does hear him. That has an interest in the battle. Here's David. Remember, David is a man after God's own heart. He's the one chosen of God to be the king of Israel. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to divide Israel is he come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him and with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth the Philistine, and that taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? David's got courage. He says what everybody else is thinking, but nobody's going to say because they don't have the courage to do so. Why? Because they don't believe and trust that God will give them the advantage over the enemy. So David just looks at him and says, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he's defying the armies of Israel? Who is this man? Now David, remember, he's, a, you know, he, he's not nowhere near the size of Goliath. But he says, who is this? Now remember, David had some things in his back pocket that he knew God had, had helped him with, and he had some courage that he'd already been to battle with the enemy before, and he knew that God, uh, you know, that, that this man Goliath was no match for the God of heaven. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why comest thou there hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know the pride, thy pride and the naughtiness of thy heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. So he rebukes David. The oldest, the oldest brother rebukes David and said, What are you doing down here? They didn't like him to start with. And they said, what are you doing down here? You need to be back there tending those sheep. You've got no business down here in this battle. And all you did was come down here to see the action. So that's the only reason you're down here, just so you can see the fight. Well, David, being the strong man that he was and the strong brother that he was, he turned around to his brother and he said this. <clears throat> and David said, what have I now done? He said, what have I done? He said, all I did was do what Daddy said to do. He said, Daddy told me to come down here and bring these loaves and these, these uh, cheeses and come down and check on y'all, and here you are blasting me for being down here. I'm doing what Daddy told me to do. And he looks at him and said, is there not a cost here? Is there not a reason? Is there not some good cause why I'm down here and why... Why, y'all are sitting here doing nothing and letting this big bully over here run over all of you? Is there not a cause? Is there, some, is there not a reason for all of this? And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former matter. We ain't going down there and, and get killed. <clears throat> And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. So they, somebody goes running to Saul and says, Hey, we got a man down here that's crazy. 
we got a man down here that acts like he's got some sense about him and don't act like he's afraid to fight. David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. <laughs> Y'all don't worry about it. Don't have a heart attack because of this man. I'm going to go fight him. And, of course, all of them looked at him like, well, how in the world are you going to stand against this? How in the world is such a man going to stand against this Goliath? Now, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a few things right now before we get, because if I get to preaching on the battle, uh, we'll be here for another hour. But now you got the picture. Here is David going down there, doing what Daddy said to do, getting, you know, getting blasted by his brother Eliab for, for being down there to start with. And he said, what's the matter, y'all? Is there not a cause here? You're letting this big bully over here, Goliath, defy the whole army of the nation of Israel. So I'll tell you what, he said, I'll go fight him. David, the man after God's own heart. Now, I want to give you about three things this morning, and we'll be through. Some facts about David. He was faced, listen now, you can, you're always going to be able to put yourself in the place of David. David was faced with overwhelming opposition. I mean, there was, everybody was opposed to him. His brother, his family was in opposition to him even being down there. And friend, you'll face times when your family is going to be in opposition to you serving the Lord. Somebody in your family will be in opposition to you serving the Lord and doing what you know is right in the face of God. He was faced by over, overwhelming opposition by his own brothers. They didn't want him to be down there. And probably many of the others wondered, what in the world is this little guy doing down here? He, he ought to be back at the house. He ain't got no business. He ain't old enough. He's too small. He ain't, he, you know, he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna do nothing down here because it's all to get killed. That was their attitude. But he was also faced with overwhelming opposition while he was a shepherd. And we'll read the story of where the lion came and where the bear came. And listen, David didn't have spear or sword because the Philistines made sure that they didn't have anything like that. And that's more scripture. But there was not a sword in the, you know, in the land of Israel. They had nothing to fight with. So David did what he did by what God gave him to do it with. Did you get that? David was able to do what he did because of what God gave him to do it with. God will never ask you to do anything except he give you the means and the way and the tools to do the job. So when the bear and the lion came out, he slew them, killed a bear and a lion. How many of you in here are going to face a bear and a lion today with your bare hands? Anybody? Come on now, surely someone here will fight the bear and the lion. Anybody in the right mind is going to try their best to avoid a lion comes at me or a bear comes at me, I'm going to be curled up in a fetal position next to the biggest tree or the rock I can find praying to God, Lord, don't let him, don't let him eat me. And Lord, if I see him asking a blessing, I know I'm done. <laughs> but listen, God will never put any battle before you that he won't give you the way to fight that battle and the means of having the victory. And David grew up knowing that. He grew up knowing that because he spent his young life with the Lord, being obedient to doing what his father had him doing, tending the sheep. So David faced the opposition while he was a shepherd. He faced the opposition when he went forth to battle. And then he faced the opposition of Goliath. But David's great faith. Now this is all good about David. We're going to come to some preaching that's not real good about David. But this is real good. He had faith in God and, the, and Goliath defied him. But God gave him faith to believe, I'll beat you. Oh boy, I'm going to knock you out and cut your head off. 
And everybody jeered at him. Everybody made fun of him. Now, he faced opposition from, from these, but David had overwhelming faith. He had overwhelming faith. He had faith to stand before his brethren, before his brothers who were in opposition to him. He stood before his older brother and said, what have I done now? No doubt David grew up in a, in a household where his brothers probably picked on him all the time and probably put him down a lot. But when he's doing what his daddy said to do, he went down there and his brothers rose up against him and said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause here? So he stood in, as, as he was faced with oppos opposition from his brothers, he stood with great faith. He had overwhelming faith that God could do through him what God wanted to do through him if David himself was truly obedient to follow God's plan. Now, friend, we ought to be obedient to follow the plan of God. There's nothing anyone in this church this morning cannot accomplish for the Lord if we'll just be obedient to the plan of God. We ought to go out here today saying, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I want to do it, and I want to do it with the power of God upon my life that I can, that I can uh, you know, face the enemy with courage, fight the battle with faith, and do whatever I need to do in this day to stand for the truth. He had overwhelming faith and he was assured of the help of God because God had helped him before. God was going to help him again. I don't think David had any doubt in his mind that the battle was the Lord. David had faith to face that giant when nobody else would face the giant. Friend, we all face giants. Everybody in here faces giants. And that may not be a Goliath that, if I said nine to 12, let's go with 10. That's pretty close. 10 and a half feet. That's a good. This Goliath, 10 and a half feet. David was, we don't face that kind of giant, but we face giants that are not physical giants. We all face the pressure of life. We all face the, the uh, sometimes the pressure of family. We face the, many people face the fight of depression. That's a giant in many people's life. Maybe a physical illness, that is a giant in your life. Maybe family problems, that is a giant in your life. But I'm telling you, there's nothing too big for my God that he can't handle it. Nothing. He can take care of it all. So David had the faith, faith to face the giant when no one else would. And David also had the assurance that what God had done before, God would do it again. Friend, I'm telling you, if you're facing giants in your life, you gotta, you know, you got to be like David, Lord. I want to believe and trust that what you helped me in the past, you're going to help me again. And you've got to understand that the God of heaven will help you do whatever he wants you to do for his glory. Father, we thank you for the word of God today. Bless it, I pray. And Lord, as we continue these messages, Father, for on the life of David, God, help us to grow strong in the power of thy might. We thank you in Jesus' name. While every head's bowed, no one looking around, I want to ask you a question today. Would there possibly be someone in the building that say, Preacher, I have no idea about fight, fighting giants because I've never been saved by the grace of God. Well, you are fighting a giant. It's a giant of the devil himself trying to keep you from going to heaven. If you're there this morning, you've never accepted Christ as your Savior. You've never been born again by the grace of God. You've never realized you're a sinner. 